We're going to start the lesson on linear and compound inequalities with a little introduction. First, let's talk about a linear inequality. A linear inequality uh, compares two expressions using the, one of the four inequality symbols. So the four inequality symbols, we have greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to. So those are the four that we use to compare. Final solutions when we have linear inequalities could look something like x is greater than 10. So it almost looks like an equation except that inequality symbol makes a big difference because if we just have x equals 10, that's one solution, that x is 10. When we have x is greater than 10, we're saying that any number larger than 10 is a solution to the linear inequality. So linear inequalities of this, this form generally have infinitely many solutions. The trick is figuring out where they start or where they end. And generally when we're writing our linear inequalities, we're going to be asked to do three things. We're going to be asked to solve and, and get the sentence here. We're going to be asked to graph it on a number line and we're going to be asked to write it in interval notation. So here's the, the worked out algebra. If we were to graph this on a number line, we just want to make sure that 10 is somewhere on that number line. Number lines always go from least to greatest when we're writing it out. So the smaller number here, and it should be counting up as we go from left to right. When we have either greater than or less than, we put an open circle over the, the, the beginning or the end of the solution. So I put an open circle. The open circle just indicates that this is where the solutions start, but we are not including this particular number. And then numbers that are bigger than 10 are to the right of 10 on a number line, so we would draw an arrow going this way. And this indicates, and you can get fancy if you want. Some people will like color underneath uh, in between the line itself and the number line. It's up to you or what your professor tells you to do. Now, we use an open circle, and I have students who say, well, why don't we just use a, a closed circle at 11? Well, because there's infinitely many solutions between 10 and 11. If you, if you start at 11, then you're not including 10.1, which is a solution here. You're not including 10.05, which is a solution here. So that's why we use an open circle instead of just going to the next integer, because the solutions don't have to be integers. So just to clarify, when it's greater than or less than, we use an open circle over the starting point or the ending point. And we'll talk about the or equal to's in a second. Let's just also look at the interval notation. In interval notation, if I want to represent numbers that are bigger than 10, since 10 is like the starting point of the solutions, we'll put 10 first. And there's no biggest number, so we'll say it goes to infinity. 10 is not included, so we use a parenthesis. And we always use a parenthesis on the side with infinity. So that's what a linear inequality would look like. Uh, when there's an open circle. If we look at another example, so let's say y is less than or equal to 4. When we have the or equal to, when we're talking about our number line, we are going to use a closed circle. So since it is part of the graph, uh, I'm sorry, it is part of the solution set, it's just like we saw with equations where you use a closed circle. We use a closed circle to say, look, here's a point that is part of the solution set. Now, where are the numbers less than or equal to 4? To the left of 4 on a number line. So we would go to the left and draw an arrow that way. That's instead of drawing a bunch of points to represent everything, because it's impossible to draw all the points, we use a line to indicate all the points along here are part of the solution set. So when we have or equal to and or equal to, we use a closed circle. And then lastly, we want to write this in interval notation. So in interval notation, the smallest, well, there is no smallest. So the way we say there's no smallest uh, solution is we do negative infinity. So it goes from negative infinity with that parenthesis, and the end point here, it ends at 4. 4 is included, and the way we show that 4 is included in interval notation is we use a bracket. So that's linear inequalities. There are also compound inequalities that will be discussed in this section. Compound inequalities are the combination of two linear inequalities, uh, and they, there are two types of compound inequalities. So compound generally, like if you think of like, uh, if you think of a compound word, it's the combination of two words. So like dog house is the combination of dog and house. Compound inequality is no different. It's taking this inequality and this inequality and then just saying that they're all part of, the, part of one problem now. The two types of compound inequalities, we have conjunctions 
And if you've ever taken a set theory class, then you might know conjunctions are associated with the word and. There is also set theory notation, but for and, it's not really relevant to what we're doing. We don't necessarily need to know it, so I'm going to bypass that, but just know it exists. Um, if you think of a conjunction, that means you have to meet two requirements. So if you're in your 20s, then the two requirements are you are 20 or older, but also you're less than 30. So you're somewhere in between 20 and 30. Um, so a conjunction, you have to meet two requirements. And with con conjunctions, we have one interval of numbers. So we have one interval of numbers in the solution set. Numbers in the solution set. Generally, if we're dealing with a conjunction, we are not going to use infinity signs because it should be contained. There should be a smallest point and a largest point. We're just looking at everything in between. The alternative to a conjunction is a disjunction. For a disjunction, that's associated with the word or. And this symbol actually is important. We do want to know the symbol for a disjunction. So in set theory, we use, it's, a, it's called a cup, and we would say A union B. So that symbol, it kind of looks like a U without the little front tail. That would be our disjunction symbol. A disjunction, you either meet this requirement or you meet this requirement. Generally, you don't meet both. So it's like if there's a special pricing for kids under 12 or adults older than 65, that would be a disjunction. You get a discount if you're one of those two things. But I've never met anyone who falls into both categories, who's both a kid under 12 and over 65. So with disjunction, we use the word or. And with disjunctions, typically, we will have two intervals of numbers where there is one that has a, a no least point that, that starts at negative infinity and goes somewhere and then it stops and there's a break and then we have a second interval of numbers. So with a disjunction, we typically see two intervals of numbers in the solution set. Just real quick talking about the way that we can write the solutions algebraically. With a conjunction, it's very common to uh, write just one compound inequality for the solution. So we might be able to write a solution for a conjunction as 6 is less than x is less than or equal to 8. And this is a compound inequality. It's taking two things. So x has to meet two requirements. 6 has to be less than it, and also it has to be less than or equal to 8. Um, you are allowed to split up conjunctions if you want. So you could say x is greater than 6 and x is less than or equal to 8. Um, but mathematicians generally want to write the least amount humanly possible, so they're going to stick to this because it's less to write. And also it's just, it's nice, it helps you write the interval notation, it's just, it's right written out for you. The number line kind of like matches right up with that. So we generally prefer this, but this is also acceptable. For a disjunction, you must write two separate inequalities. Uh, the reason that this works is because no matter what, it will always be true. 6 will always be less than something which is less than or equal to 8. With disjunctions, we're not going to see that, and, and we're not allowed to, to write anything here other than less than or less than or equal to. So a disjunction might look like x is less than 6 or x is greater than 8. There's two distinct sets of numbers, the numbers that are less than 6, and then the other set is the numbers greater than 8. So these would be a disjunction. We use the word or. I think my colleague would be mad at me because I'm supposed to use the union symbol, so we're going to switch that to a union symbol. And this is how we would write an answer for a disjunction.